This is Flipper Zero and this is Kisu V4B. Flipper Zero is a pocketable electronic multi-tool that can read and copy RFID and NFC tags, manipulate sub-gigahertz wireless and infrared remote control signals, and interface with a bunch of custom modules for expanded functionality. Kiso V4B is also a pocketable electronic multi-tool and it has all the same features of a Flipper Zero. It actually even runs the exact same firmware. It can use the same large selection of modules and it even comes with a few more sensors built in. All of this at about half the price of a Flipper Zero. Is this a Flipper Zero clone and how well does it actually work? Let's start by taking a look at the hardware of this device. Flipper Zero is an open source project both in software and in hardware. Kisu is not a direct Flipper Zero clone, but it replicates the functionality of Flipper Zero, although with some minor changes. Flipper Zero uses a retro LCD display where Kisu opted for a smaller OLED display. To make this work, there is a second STM microcontroller on the board that makes the firmware think it's talking to the hardware in a Flipper Zero. Flipper Zero is made from multiple PCB boards sandwiched together into this lumpy shape, whereas the Kisu V4B has everything packed together on a single card-sized PCB. This comes with some compromises. The battery on a Kiso is a small coin cell LiPo with a quite limited battery life compared to the Flipper Zero, which has a much larger battery and less power-hungry screen. It is possible to solder in a larger battery on the Kiso though. Charging is done through the USB-C connector as with a Flipper Zero. When you order a Kiso, you only get this bare PCB and no case. You have to 3D print one, and as of the making of this video, the ones available for printing that I've tried aren't as solid as I would have liked. You have the same header pins available for connecting external modules on the Kisu board as on a Flipper Zero, but you have to solder in the header pin connector yourself. Kisu V4B has a built-in CC1101 chip for sub-gigahertz functionality, just like a Flipper Zero and it also has a built-in antenna. But you can actually solder on an SMA connector to the board for directly connecting external antennas. If you do, you will have to move a tiny capacitor on the PCB to switch from using the internal antenna to the external instead. This forces you to always use an external antenna though, unless you move this tiny component back to switch to the internal one again. You cannot have both active at the same time. Besides having all the same functionality as a Flipper Zero, including i-button connectors on the corner, Kisu V4B also comes with a few more sensors. It has a built-in compass, accelerometer, temperature sensor, humidity sensor and a light sensor, as well as room for installing a few extra ones. Using a Kisu V4B is very similar to using a Flipper Zero, but not entirely. Let's take a look at the software. To turn on the Kiso V4B, you have to press this button on the top right, which is different from a Flipper Zero, which is turned on by holding the back button. Turning Kiso V4B off is still done by holding the back button though. Kiso V4B comes with a slightly modified Flipper Zero original firmware. I ordered it with the SD card included, which came preloaded with the necessary files but you can also find these on the Kiso GitHub. I prefer using the Momentum custom firmware on my Flipper Zero. And there is also a version available of Momentum which is compatible with Kiso V4B. To install this, simply go to the Momentum firmware website, click install, connect your Kiso to your computer, select branch, channel, and then the Kiso MNTM branch and install it. Using Kiso is basically identical to using a Flipper Zero. Press the middle button to open the menu, use the directional buttons for navigating the menus, and the back button to go back. The software is identical to a regular Flipper Zero, 
and you have the same apps for manipulating NFC, sub gigahertz, infrared and so on. You can even connect it to your computer and it will show up in QFlipper like a regular Flipper Zero. You can move files to and from it and remote control it. The OLED display on the Kiso has reversed colors. I've used the dark mode in Momentum to reverse them back. The screen automatically turns off after the period of time you set in the backlight time setting. The LED will pulse a red color a couple of times before turning the Kiso off completely to save on battery. Press any button while it's pulsing to wake it up. In the Kisu SD card zip file found on the GitHub, you will find the Kisu specific apps in a folder called Kisu that you can copy to your SD card apps folder. One of the apps is a light sensor readout. The light sensor is located to the left of the battery, just above the GPIO pins. The most interesting of the apps is the Kisu sensor hub app. This will display data from all of the Kisu specific sensors at once. And you can move the cursor around and click each readout for more detailed information and even calibrate some of them. Although even after calibration, I still can't get the compass to work very well. The last application is the Kisu companion bridge, which is used for flashing the second STM microcontroller on the board with new firmware. This is not the one where the flipper firmware is installed, but the one that acts as an emulation link between the flipper firmware and the actual hardware itself. So is Kiso V4B a good, cheap alternative to Flipper Zero? Well, maybe, if you can live with the limitations that it also comes with. As the name suggests, this is not the first version of the Kisu board, but it's probably the version that comes closest to actually working fully like a Flipper Zero. Kisu themselves describes it as a development board intended for experienced users and not a consumer product though. Without a case and with a tiny battery, it's definitely not as robust as a Flipper Zero. And it would have been nice if at least the header pin connectors came soldered on. But the reason why they are not, besides through hole components adding manufacturing costs, probably has to do with the weird design of this PCB. Everything is sort of in the way. If you wanted to solder on a bigger battery, where would you put it? You can't really put it on the back because it would be in the way of the RFID and the NFC antenna. You can't really put it on the front because it would be in the way of the GPIO connector and the light sensor. I've seen some put the GPIO connector on the back instead, or bend it down so that the modules connect on the bottom, which might be a better solution. The 3D printable cases available at the moment are kind of flimsy and leaves it open and unprotected. Not something I'd confidently throw in a pocket like I do all the time with my Flipper Zero. They claim that the reason for making the Kisu as a card-shaped PCB is to make a smaller, more pocketable Flipper Zero compatible device. I don't really buy that. I think the primary reason is because it's much easier and cheaper to design and manufacture an electronic device which is entirely a single board PCB. But while I do have some nitpicks that could be improved, I truly have to commend Kiso though for doing what most thought impossible. They are successfully designing, manufacturing and shipping a product that has the exact same functionality as Flipper Zero at a much lower cost. Something that has been claimed to be easy and even attempted by many before them. But Kisu are actually putting more interesting electronics in the hands of more creative people. If you want a cheap way to dip your toes into the world of Flipper Zero and you can live with the limitations, then you might have fun with this peculiar little thing. I hope I've given you a small insight into what the Kisu V4B is all about. <laughs>